Thank you. Chairman Thornberry, Ranking Member Smith, and members of the committee, it is a privilege to be back, although it's a bit of a different viewpoint from down here. Uh, I, I was <laughs> really honored to support you and all the vital national security work you do and was fortunate to see firsthand the bipartisan approach that you took to national security and providing for our military, so thank you. In my new role, I support the Under Secretary of Defense for Intelligence as he carries out his lead responsibilities within the department on behalf of the Secretary for both intelligence and security, executing the national defense strategy, including its direction to protect the national security innovation base. As you heard from my ODNI colleague, the Department of Defense is facing unprecedented threats to its technological and industrial base, putting at risk the capabilities critical to maintaining our military advantage. China, in particular, has made it a national goal to acquire foreign technologies to advance its economy and to modernize its military. It is comprehensively targeting advanced U.S. technologies and the people, the information, businesses, and research in institutions that underpin them. It is playing the long game, using a variety of different methods to steal our information, circumvent our processes, and exploit our seams. Across the defense intelligence and security enterprise that the USDI oversees, we are making significant changes in our approach to industrial and to information security, as well as to counterintelligence. I welcome the opportunity to follow up with you in a classified session to discuss additional initiatives we are undertaking that will provide you with a more holistic picture. In our unclassified form today, I'll touch briefly on four key lines of effort. First, we are elevating the private sector's focus on security through an initiative called Deliver Uncompromised. We must have confidence that industry is delivering capabilities, technologies, and weapon systems that are uncompromised by our adversaries, secure from cradle to grave. It is no longer sufficient to only consider cost, schedule, and performance when acquiring defense capabilities. We must establish security as a fourth pillar in defense acquisition uh, and also create incentives for industry to embrace security, not as a cost burden, but as a major factor in their competitiveness for U.S. government business. Second, through the Defense Security Service, we are implementing a more comprehensive approach to industrial and information security. We are transitioning from a compliance checklist-based national industrial security program to a risk-based approach informed by the threat and the department's technology protection priorities. However, safeguarding our clear defense contractors only protects part of our defense industrial base. The increasing ease of access to large amounts of unclassified and non-government data in the defense industrial base offers opportunities for exploitation which in aggregation can be as damaging as a breach of classified information. To narrow this gap between protecting classified information and that unprotected unclassified information, we are developing a program protection plan to cover controlled unclassified information, including identifying the policy and resources necessary to do this. Third, using authorities provided by this committee, including Section 806 of the Fiscal Year 2011 NDAA and Section 1696 of last year's NDAA, we are strengthening the integrity of the supply chain, as well as establishing a pilot program to enhance information sharing with clear defense contractors. And fourth, we are enhancing our counterintelligence capabilities to better address the non-traditional collection methods being employed by our adversaries. We are adding security and counterintelligence personnel resources to the Defense Security Service, NCIS, Air Force, Office of Special Investigations, and the Army CI. Our defense intelligence components are augmenting their collection and analysis capabilities to gain a more comprehensive understanding of threats to our technologies, which will improve our intelligence support to export control reviews and CFIUS transactions. Lastly, we are increasingly relying on our partnerships with FBI, not just increasingly, but we must rely on our partnerships with the FBI, Homeland Security, and other departments to actively leverage both our individual and our collective authorities to protect the nation's critical technologies. Through these four lines of effort, we can help mitigate the threats to our technology and information critical to our military advantage, and by doing so, deliver uncompromised capabilities to our warfighters. We recognize that strong relationships with industry across the interagency, with our allies and partners, and with Congress are essential to that success. We thank you for your continued focus on the threat, your understanding of the impact to our warfighters and their capabilities, and your commitment to support our policies, programs, and the resources necessary to maintain our advantage. I look forward to your questions.